Wow! Hey, Adabot. Have you seen any of my batteries around? Oh, hi, Lady Ada. I was just thinking about all the energy stored in these batteries, just waiting to be used. That's right. Batteries are really cool. And they're even cooler when they're used to power my multimeter. Batteries give us electricity on the go without needing to plug into a wall socket. But there's one thing I don't understand. What's that, Adabot? How do we fill batteries up with electricity in the first place? Well, batteries aren't really filled with electricity. They're filled with a bunch of components that generate electrical current. Oh, you mean they have little machines inside? Hmm, not exactly. I think we should look this one up. Agreed. Accessing database. Battery. <laughs> There are two important parts of every battery, the positive and negative terminal. And if we opened up a battery, it would look like this. Huh, how does that make electricity? Well, a battery uses chemistry to create electricity. It's called an electrochemical reaction. Ooh, sounds powerful. It definitely is. Each terminal in a battery is made of a different kind of material. The negative terminal is made of material that has a lot of extra electrons in it. It looks pretty crowded in there. It sure is. And all those electrons really want to get some more space. They want to go over to the positive terminal, which has a lot of holes, so that the electrons can fit into them. It doesn't look too far. Can't they just jump to the positive terminal? They can't do that because the battery is filled with a special chemical called electrolyte. And it's very difficult for electrons to move through electrolyte. That's awful. If they can't move through the electrolyte, how are they going to get to those empty spots on the positive terminal? By traveling through a circuit. When connected to a circuit, the electrons can flow through the circuit from the negative to the positive terminal. They travel through all those parts just to get there? That's right, and they make all sorts of things happen along the way. You mean like lighting up an LED or making a motor move? Exactly, and it all starts inside the battery. Batteries are powerful. It must be pretty difficult to make them. Actually, we can make one right here. It's easy. Right, I'll go get the chemistry set. Wait, wait, don't go anywhere. Everything we need is right on this table. Oh, uh, a lemon? That's right. The juice inside of this lemon makes for a very good electrolyte. This galvanized nail is coated with zinc, and we can use that as our negative terminal. And this shiny copper penny will make a good positive terminal. So, how do we put it all together? Easy. First, we roll the lemon while pressing down on it to make sure there's lots of juice flowing inside. Then, insert the penny on the right side. and a galvanized nail on the opposite side. So simple. Can we test it with the multimeter? That's a good idea. Our lemon battery is producing about one volt. Is that enough to power an LED? Not quite, but what we can do is link multiple lemon batteries together in series to increase the voltage. Excellent. We now have a total of four lemon batteries. Now how do we connect them all together? To connect batteries in series, we connect the positive terminal of one battery to the negative terminal of the one next to it. 
we'll use these alligator clips. Now the two remaining terminals can connect to our LED. Correct. Let's work! An LED powered by lemons. Not just lemons. Don't forget, Adabot, it's the lemon, the zinc nail, and the copper penny that work together to create the electrochemical reaction that generates current. And they sure do make a lot of juice. They sure do, Adabot. We'll never have to buy batteries again. Well, even though we didn't make a working battery, they're quite large and they wouldn't fit in my multimeter. So for now, I think we should continue buying batteries. Oh, can we make lemonade instead? Sure, why not? <laughs>